The House will come to order. The next question, the member for Humber River, Black Creek. Uh, thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Not only is this government putting good-paying jobs at risk in Thunder Bay, it is also putting good-paying local jobs at risk for historically disadvantaged communities by not including minimum hiring targets for Black, Indigenous and other equity-seeking groups in the tunneling contracts for the Scarborough Subway Extension and Eglinton Crosstown West Extension projects. An aspirational goal of hiring at least 10 per cent of all workers from equity-deserving groups has been included in the contract for every major Metrolinx project since 2013. The Premier should know the positive change this provision has created in the quality of life of many workers and their families on projects like the Finch West LRT, which runs through both of our communities in northwest Toronto. So why has this government now removed this? The Associate Minister of Transportation, GTA. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, the pandemic, while tough on all of us, has not stopped us from making progress on the Ontario line or any of our priority projects. $28.5 billion in infrastructure investment, long overdue investment, means a lot of jobs. In fact, Speaker, it's almost 5,000 jobs during the construction alone, with $11 billion going back to local economic growth. It's not just jobs, it's spurring on the local economy, and I can't think of a better time when we are coming out of a very difficult two years, Speaker. Those jobs will continue to provide well-paying families food for pet families and get them through these very difficult times, and we are confident that Metrolinx will continue its fair hiring practices as it has done engaging with communities, Speaker. We are going to get through this pandemic. It will be an unparalleled time of prosperity for the great people of this province, and we're going to finally have the subway systems to keep us moving as well. The supplementary question. Thank you, Speaker. Phil Verster, the CEO of Metrolinx, wrote in a letter to Toronto Community Benefits Network that it would be taking a new approach to community benefits agreements on new transit projects. In her response, Rosemary Powell, Executive Director of Toronto Community Benefits Network, wrote that Metrolinx's new approach does not take into account elements that, quote, have been negotiated in good faith over the past seven years as a minimum standard expected by the community and the equity-deserving groups it is meant to benefit. This includes setting minimum hiring thresholds and targets for equity-seeking groups, contract opportunities for local and minority-owned businesses, and ensuring that there is community involvement. Can the Premier make a commitment that all current and future transit expansion projects will have community benefits agreements that, at a very minimum, include all of these items? Associate Minister. So, uh, thank you very much, Speaker. And you know, I, I appreciate the question from the member opposite, who I have a lot of respect for. It's an important issue when it comes to uh, uh, equity and, and fair opportunity for all, and that includes in the hiring practices of our public agencies. And I know Metrolinx is no exception to that. In fact, they have been uh, treating community engagement as a priority whether that it comes to community impacts, whether that comes to consultations, uh, giving back to the community, and indeed when it comes to hiring practices. I know Metrolinx will continue to, to work and consult and engage with uh, all of our communities, as is the process to, to this point, Speaker. And if the member has any other ideas on how to continue that engagement, I am happy to listen to that. Metrolinx has done a great job. We count on them to continue doing that moving forward. 